Welcome back to BSPN, and today's episode is a little bit different because we're going to be covering an NPC show instead of IFBB, and that is the NPC All South Championships. I'm going to go into a few things that we noticed at this particular show, and really pay attention because I'd like your feedback, and I'd like to know what you would like to see when I go to these shows, because I'm at shows every weekend almost, so I know there's lots of questions that you guys have, so please feel free to watch and Put your input in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see, basically. And also, subscribe, comment, like, all of the fun things that we need in order to grow this channel. And remember that we do have our YouTube posing giveaway. So every time you do that, you get another entry. Thanks a lot for joining us again, and enjoy. Way into the Clash All South now, and just go and cover a couple of things I wanted to from the show this weekend. So. If you saw my stories, um, one of the things that I mentioned was that there was a girl in the show uh, with purple hair. So um, I saw her, I'd seen her compete during prejudging. She did both wellness and uh, bikini, and she looked great. I mean, she she really did. She looked great. Uh, beautiful purple hair, similar to kind of what I've got going on, but purple. Um, and long, curled, it was healthy, looked, looked pretty. She had a purple suit on, all that kind of stuff too. Um, looked really nice. So we were sitting there at finals and I was sitting with Lauren Dannon Miller. She was there too with her clients and, and she goes, oh look, there's a girl with purple hair. I said, yeah, it looks pretty and everything like that. And we're just talking for a second and you know, the girl goes off stage and everything. And I looked at Lauren and I said, um, I said yeah, I said that, that purple hair looked beautiful on her. I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, do you remember her, what her physique looked like? And Lauren's face, I wish I'd got Lauren's face on, on camera because she just went, no, I don't. Exactly. So I have people telling me that I can wear my pink hair on stage. Um, I've had every judge I've asked has said I can wear my pink hair on stage, but I'm still not convinced in that because of that factor alone. You look at the purple hair or the pink hair and that's all that you see. You don't even notice the actual person. You know what I mean? I remembered her because I watched her all through prejudging in like five different classes and things like that. But Lauren didn't remember what she looked like because that was the first time she'd seen her, you know? so. My thought process when it comes to things like this is that you kind of have to choose your battles. There's a reason why you don't want to do anything that's way out of the box, uh, that doesn't look like natural girl next door because it becomes the focal point. You know, that purple hair became the focal point when that girl walked on stage. Uh, and when we're talking about the pro league, <laughs> you don't want your hair to be the focal point, right? You want your body to be the focal point. You want your whole package to complement each other and not have one thing stick out like that, right? So those are some things to think about when you're actually putting together your own package for stage. Um, you know, I have girls come to me all the time telling me that they don't want this color suit because everybody wears it like blue. They don't want to wear blue because everybody wears blue. I'm like, yeah, but everybody, everybody wears blue because it's a good color on everybody. You know what I mean? Like people want to wear like yellow or they want to wear white or they want to wear gold or they want to, I'm like, or orange. I get orange all the time. I'm like, no, you can't. I'm like, you don't understand when you go on stage and something like that, that is the only thing that you see. You want to look like a complete package where not one thing just sticks out. Okay. So that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. And again, I've got some pictures and videos and stuff like that of that particular situation. So that'll put that in the, in, <clears throat> into the YouTube edit as well. So that. And then um, one of the questions that was asked that I look at um, from my stories um, when I was at the show is, did they have a mandatory front pose in wellness? Um, so what's coming down the pike is that there is going to be a mandatory front pose for wellness competitors, right? You have to do the front, standing on front pose, you can't do a quarter turn kind of uh, variation as your front pose, right? Um, <clears throat> I don't think that's been made official yet. And it definitely was not enforced at this particular show. So I wanted to bring that up too, because there were some girls that still did like the kind of quarter turn as their front pose. Uh, most everybody still did the main front pose for wellness, which is the, the straight on kind of pose um, that this one, and I'll, again, I've got video of it, but where they do this, this kind of thing, most everybody did that one, but there were still a few that were hitting their kind of side quarter turn kind of thing. So it was not enforced as a main front pose. Um, and again, I've got video of that, so I'll show you. Um, I like the idea of having the mandatory front pose because I think you need to be able to be compared. You know what I mean? Um, it's really hard to compare when everybody's in that mandatory front pose except for like one person, right? So I think that having a 
I think that having a mandatory front post is a good thing uh, in wellness. I think that'll be, that'll be a positive thing. Um, but as of right now, it is not being enforced, at least at the local level. So it'll probably get enforced at the pro level and work its way down from there. Okay, so if you are a wellness competitor, be prepared for that. Be prepared that you probably are going to have to have, have, to have that mandatory front post. Okay, um, and the last point I wanted to bring up about All South was the girl that won the figure overall also won the wellness, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not wellness, uh, women's physique overall. And I saw this po pop up on a few different people's posts and things like that. Like it's two different um, categories. Why is the criteria not, you know, why is the criteria the same? Why did one girl win both? Uh, that kind of thing. So it goes back to that concept of you have to reward what shows up, right? And when it came to the girl that won the figure overall and the wellness overall, or I keep saying wellness, sorry, figure and women's physique overall, she was the best competitor on stage in both of those divisions. Um, there was a couple of girls in figure that gave her a good run for their money, run for her money as far as um, criteria was concerned. But when it came to women's physique, she was really the only one that fit, fit the women's physique criteria. Uh, so she rightfully won both of those divisions because you have to remember that the judges don't judge you like in one one division and then remember that and take you and judge you into another division that's not how it works you get judged for every division or every class that you go out in and that's why sometimes you'll see girls do better in one class versus another class in the same division because they're being rejudged good example of that is one of my own clients when she came out for her first bikini uh division class this past weekend she didn't pose facing in towards the head judge, so she kind of got bumped out and bumped out and bumped out because her posing was not facing inward. Um, but then by the time she got to her last class, she was placed inward, she was placed in towards the center, so her poses were more straight on to the judges, and she placed better because she actually performed better in those particular uh, classes. So it's the same thing here when we're talking about going from divisions. Um, just because you win in one division doesn't mean you can't win in another division. If you're the one that, that is closest to the right criteria that day in that division, then you're gonna win that particular division. Just how it works. So yeah, the criteria for figure and for women's physique is different. It is definitely different. But that day, they gotta pick the girl that fits the criteria the closest. And that one girl fit the criteria the closest for both divisions. Now, if she's going up to national level, she is 100% figure. Um, she's just not, in my opinion, she's not big enough for women's physique uh, on the national level. But figure, she would fit. So that would be my two cents. I would like to see her continue in figure if she goes up to the national level. But at the local level, she fit in both. So, is what it is. That can very well happen to you. I've seen it happen a thousand times where the same girl will win bikini and figure. I've seen it happen. I've seen the same girl win bikini and wellness. I've seen it happen. You know, so it's just a matter of who shows up that day and what you're standing next to in each division. Okay. Um, I also wanted to give you guys a little view of what we do prior to getting on stage. Now, this is Irina. This is one of my suit and posing clients. We're running through her routine prior to her going on stage uh, for pre-judging that morning. So I do this with each one of the girls, just make sure that the posing is hitting right, that you know her suit's sitting on her correctly, her hair and makeup looks good, tan looks good, all of those things. This is just the final check prior to her going on stage to actually compete. And she did very well in this show. Uh, I believe she placed fifth in Masters and then second in Open. So she did a really, really good job with this particular show for herself. Uh, gorgeous suit and gorgeous look overall. Now we also took her on stage after check-ins on Friday night. I really recommend that you do this when you go to a show. Now Bring I want you to listen to carefully to this Go next get on the stage, right walk the stage. This particular stage had carpeting, so which is difficult to maneuver if you're not used to it in your heels. And then also see how she's posing on the gray portion and in between those black lines. Those black lines are where the stage actually comes together and it's raised and it's bumpy. And if you hit that with your heels, you're gonna bobble and wobble. So because she went on this stage on Friday night, she knew that that was going to be a thing. So she was able to avoid it when she actually went on stage on Saturday as well. Really, really important to go walk the stage when you go to check in. Mm -hmm. Looks really good though. Coach said that I should get a little bit 
I told her to show me her tan and she did and I said yes go get darker go get another coat this is something that I help with as well this is one of the girls that I did makeup for at this show and basically her coach was not there so her coach told her she needed to get darker in her tan she came to me I said yes I confirm that go get tanned uh, darker so that's also something that I do quite frequently with the girls that I work with at shows they all have their own coaches so a lot of times they or their coaches will bounce things off of me while I'm there and I'll confirm yes or no and go for it just so we can present the best possible package on stage for her that day this is like the, the fifth body fusion group over here, yes. right? How's everybody doing? Good? Good. Good? Hair yeah. yeah. looks good. It's starting to like yeah, simmer. Yeah, fall out. And I ran my fingers through it. Yeah. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Thank awesome. you. Guys look beautiful. So at this point, I'm just walking through the backstage area and heading back out towards the audience. And you'll see as we round this corner, our lovely Sean's Couture Cuties booth over there by Redcon. We did something a little different at this show than what we do typically and just provided a lot of educational material, pamphlets, flyers, things that girls could pick up and actually learn from. Worked out really well. All of our flyers pretty much left the table by the end of the show, so that was great. Now I'm heading in to the actual audience and you're gonna see why I get the best videos at every show I possibly can get to. This is what I do, I beeline to the front. And this part is really important to me because not just for the video content, but as a posing coach, as a glam coach, I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the best possible feedback that I can. When I get to as close as I can to that judging perspective, I can really see how your physique is playing, how your poses are playing, how your hair and makeup is playing off, your suit is playing off, all those things. And it matters, your perspective matters. Now I'm not obviously right in that judge's seat, but I'm pretty damn close and that really gives me the best possible view so I can give you the best possible feedback as my client. And that's really important to me. And finally, I wanted to give you guys an overview of the overall bikini comparison. Now, as you can see, there are eight height classes and this was a pretty competitive lineup. Across the board, each class winner did look phenomenal. There were portions of each physique that looked great and then there were things that need improvement and that is always the case. So, you know, I'm sitting here and I was sitting next to our buddy here, Paul Ravella. We're trying to decide who the judges are going to put into that first place position for the overall win. And honestly, I could have made an argument for a handful of these girls here on this stage. So just watch how they go through their transitions, how they actually walk to the back curtain, um, how they move people around. And you give me your thoughts. Tell me who you think's got this overall in the bag before we get to the end of this comparison lineup for you. Okay, so they're moving class G winner in towards that center spot. So that's a good thing for her. That shows that they're comparing her. And there goes class H winner as well. So we got our tall girls in that center area for this overall. And I'll be the first one to tell you that is unusual. Typically it's those center height classes that do tend to win overalls. That's just on average. However, we've been seeing recently a lot of longer, taller girls have been doing very, very well. So right now, I believe it's between those top two tall classes for this overall win. Who you got? Watch how they move their hips as they walk to the back. They keep those glutes up nice and high. Nobody's running to the back. They're going nice and smooth and slow. And again, nice and smooth towards the front, showing that attitude. Notice everything with their posing, each one of these girls, it's very smooth and fluid, nothing over the top. They're just really displaying their physiques very, very well, very clean. And there they go off with that chosen overall winner. They've already figured that out. This 
was a tough one, ladies. Great job. I'm gonna have you file off to the left. Back to you, Shannon. And Thank just like you, that, Dan. it's done. They're gonna go wait over on that side diagonal until they announce that overall winner. All right. So you tell me, who do you got? Comment below. Well, tell me who you think. And tell me why. Tell me why you think that this particular person that you've chosen belt, has won the overall. Bag, Give me your thoughts. There's no wrong answers here, by the way, guys. This is a, a subjective sport. So there are going to be people that disagree with each other, and that's okay. That's all part of this. She will also receive the paid entry to the 2021 NPC Nationals, a paid tanning package from Liquid Sunrays, and a new suit gift certificate from CJ's We got Deraja and Denitra out front there we handing out the awards. We have trophies our pros, to our overall Deraja winners at this Denitra. show, you, which ladies. is awesome. As well as none other than CJ from CJ's Elite. Please present the 2021 NPC Clash Series All South Overall Bikini Championship 2 competitor number. 281. Shawana. Overall winner. Congratulations. Did you agree with the judges? Did you have her as the overall? Great job tonight. You tell me. Comment below and tell me why. Again, no wrong answers here. The beauty of bodybuilding is that it is subjective, so everybody is allowed to have an opinion. And that's going to do it for our wrap-up of the NPC Clash Series All-South Championships. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this particular wrap-up and if you liked the points that we addressed. And if there's anything else that you'd like to see, and just give me an idea of the kind of things you would like to see at shows that I can bring to you when I attend. Would love to get your feedback, so please comment below and do so as well so that you can enter our giveaway for posing once we hit that 700 subscriber mark i'll be picking another winner for some no, some more free posing sessions with me so thanks again for tuning in please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time with more fantastic content for you thanks guys nice job.